scuba dive and the importance of marine science and ocean conservation through a scholarship of a lifetime. This is our last weekend in the pool, finishing up our scuba skills, and then it's off to the Florida Keys. We also get the lowdown on the huge problem lionfish are causing as an invasive species. Here we go. You had the mercy of the you got the keys, baby, so that you don't okay. All on the I was going to say we were close, but I guess not. Are we going to take exit six? No, we're not We were supposed to take exit six. <laughs> Someone was like, we're not taking any things. But now we're going to Denver, I guess, so. So if we're a little late, that's why. It's the last opportunity to hop in the pool before we go to the Keys. All right, <laughs> any questions before we get started? This is gonna be a very ugly PowerPoint. Ugly, there are no pictures. All right, ocean literacy is just being literate about the ocean. Noah the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration came up with these seven principles that everyone on this planet should know about the ocean because turns out how much of this planet is covered by ocean? 72%. 72%. So, again, my art hasn't gotten any better. Here's, this is uh, United States, here's Florida. You have this... <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and appropriate for today, why are lionfish unwelcome in Florida waters? Exactly. They are an invasive species. I won't get too much into them because you guys are going to learn a lot about them later, but they are voracious. They will eat basically anything that will fit in their mouths, and their mouths are huge. How does the ocean impact you here in Colorado? It provides rain. Rain. We talked about air. How many of you guys like seafood? Have you heard of the seafood app, the Monterey Bay Seafood Watch? Use the app, it's good for you. It's good to know uh, where, if you're gonna eat it, where it comes from and how it was caught. And the United States is trying to, as you guys learned, tighten up the regulations on tracing where food came from and what it is. So today, go ahead, get your bathing suits on, get your wetsuits on. We are going to seat an entry into the pool and we're going to play around at the bottom and then I'll split you guys into groups of four. Four of you guys will work with Graham, four of you will work with me <coughs> and then we'll switch and then go back, do a controlled buoyant ascent and then you guys are referral divers. Which means tomorrow you guys can carry cameras around with you. Alright? Go be free. <laughs> the dilemma. Do I cut my hair? Or do I let it grow out and like get all crazy? Or I could like do dreadlocks. That'd be pretty sweet. Especially for Florida. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I got a haircut, as you can see, which kind of makes me sad. Um, but it's also kind of happy because it was all over the place. But I'm all good, so ready, ready to jump in and get a solid day going. So we're going to do a couple stuff here in the shallow water. 
The first thing we're going to do is simulate out of air. So you guys are actually going to um, experience what it's like to run out of air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around and I'm going to turn off your tank. And I want you guys to continue breathing until you get the sensation that you're actually really just about out of air. And then you give me the out of air signal and I just turn it back on. You do what's called a controlled swimming ascent. You drop your weights and swim up. Exhaling the whole time at about 35, 30 feet. You starfish, you make yourself really big so that you have a big surface area to slow you down as you float the rest of the way up to the surface. We are gonna go down to the bottom. You're gonna get in that nice thin pivot position. I'm gonna turn your air off. You're going to drop your weight. Big starfish. Arms out, legs pointed straight out. You're not kicking. You're just gonna float to the surface. Just exhale the whole way to the surface. So I just got back from our first pool session of the weekend and I'm super psyched about everything I learned and the fact that we learned our final skills today so I'm officially a referral diver. It was great, I'm a referral diver now, so. <laughs> that just, it feels like we're so close to getting our actual certification and I'm just really excited to have completed all of the training. It's pretty cool, so tomorrow we're gonna be diving with the like, cameras and stuff. This camera is really, really exciting. It's called the Paralens, and they graciously sent us five cameras to use for our production and for you guys to use once you're certified divers. The cool thing is, is that there's no housing needed. They actually fit right on your mask, so it just clips right in and you're good to go. There's also a really cool feature. It's a selfie stick if you want to do that and it extends way out. It actually can clip on to your VC as well and it floats behind you with these little floats on the camera. So one of the things I love in particular about this camera is that it documents and it collects your data while you're diving. It color corrects itself as you go down. So about every four inches, it's documenting how deep you are and it's changing the lens for you. But anyway, so you guys will get to play with these once we're down in the key. I'm really excited to have them on board. All right, guys, let's get underwater. So you can see everybody and hear us okay? I sure can. I'm super excited to introduce our speaker for today. Uh, as you can see over here is Dr. Steve Giddings, and he is the chief scientist for NOAA's National Marine Sanctuary System. So basically Steve works with all sorts of scientists all over the country to better understand and protect our really important underwater sanctuaries. So thank you for being here today, Steve. Okay, tell me, tell me if you can see my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Lionfish are a big problem. We know that because there are so many out there in certain places where they're not supposed to be. As far as we know, nothing quite like this has happened before in the open ocean. 
unprecedented reef fish invasion. We have not seen an invasion of a species like we have with lionfish in the Western Atlantic for any other species. So it's, it's really new territory for us to learn in the ocean how an invasive species not only got started, but how it progresses, how it disperses, and how it hopefully eventually goes away as a problem. We'll see if it does. So here are some of the big problems with the lionfish. It's how much they eat is one of the big problems. They're, they're generalists, which means they eat anything that they can get their mouths around, um, up to m roughly half their body size or so. And one of the reasons there are so many is the reproductive rate. They're, they really reproduce a lot. And each female will put out a couple million eggs a year. I think, though, the, probably the biggest potential here is in the commercialization of lionfish. And that, is, that means sending professional fishermen in, and especially in deep water. So the first thing we started working with was this attraction issue. Watch what happens when it hits the bottom. Each one of those kicks the jaws open in opposite directions so that it opens on its own. And then it leaves that plastic fad standing up at the end of it. And it was a very reliable um, mechanical trap. So I was pretty happy with the way it worked. So on this whole idea of market development, which is the reason I built these traps in the first place was to create jobs for people and profits for fishermen and, you know, food for the rest of us who like lionfish, but also the conservation benefit of, of overfishing this species. Fishermen are very good at overfishing a species once they figure out how to catch them. So we're kind of hoping for that in this case, whereas normally we would want that. Anyway, anybody have any questions? I have a question. Would there be a way to bring a natural predator from their normal home into the Atlantic where they are? Or do you guys know yeah. what predators, what their main predators are? Yeah, that, that's one of the problems. We don't know what the predators are. Um, but the, in, on land, as you may know, there are, there have been many attempts to bring in wasps and other things that parasite, parasitize other animals and kill them off that way. And those can get out of control themselves. So. In the ocean, people are very worried that introducing a second species to control the first will just lead to unforeseen problems. Um, and I understand that problem. We're trying not to do that in this case. And it's probably good that we don't know what species that would be because somebody might have tried it already. I have a quick question. Yeah. Do you have anybody uh, working in the, the food side of things? Like if you got like Bobby Flay or Alex Gordishelli, like to promote the consumption of lionfish, a celebrity sure. chef like that to promote the consumption mm -hmm. of this particular fish would probably <laughs> move things along faster. Is there any development on that side of things? There's some, because Whole Foods, for some reason, will buy all the lionfish they can get from anybody around Florida. So the southeast region of Whole Foods is very into lionfish now. I think we're lucky that Whole Foods sees the light and um, kind of has taken it on themselves to get it into the distribution network that they have. Well, cool. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Steve, Thank for you taking it. Okay, I'm going to email you and hit you up for some of those do rags for all of us. <laughs> Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, Bye. Bye. See you later. later. The presentation completely like intrigued me it kind of blows my mind how little there is that i knew about such a big impact that's happening in the sea right now with invasive species I, I thought they were kind of rare which they were a few years ago but now there's like way too many really love um learning and getting to think about how maybe i can impact the lives of other species around the world getting ready for our trip to the Florida Keys and we have a special guest on the topic of plastic pollution and what we can all do to make a difference.